Hey, welcome to our scene on primary brain tumors. Here we're going to talk about a ton of information, where we're going to discuss the primary brain tumors, which show up in children, as well as those that show up in adults. And it's taking place in this platform over here, where there's a dance contest between the children and the adults. And the different characters in this scene represent a different brain tumor. Now, before we discuss the individual brain tumors, let's take a look at the platform over here. We note that there is this picture over here of a cross-section of a brain. And we note that the platform of the children is below the tentorium, while that of the adults is above the tentorium. Which helps us remember that in general, child brain tumors develop below the tentorium, such as in the cerebellum, whereas adult tumors present above the tentorium. So let's begin with the adult primary brain tumors. So here up here, we have our first dance contestant. Now this dance contestant is actually not dancing. He's actually in his rockets over here. He, he's trying to win the contest by riding in his rocket. Let's take a look. So we note over here that there are several rockets, one on top of the other, and they are kind of glowing. These are the glowing, blasting off rockets with different forms. We'll say multi-forms. Glowing, blasting rockets with multiple forms for glioblastoma multiforme. So here we're going to talk about glioblastoma multiforme, which again, classically presents in adults. And if we take a look, right behind the rockets, there is this astrocyte over here, which reminds us that glioblastoma multiforme is of astrocyte origin. And that's why this specific tumor will be GFAP positive. GFAP is a marker of the intermediate filament found in the glial cells. If we take a look over here, we note a picture, a classic picture associated with glioblastoma multiforme where we see the tumor crossing the corpus callosum. The corpus callosum is the midline structure in the brain, and we note the glioblastoma multiforme crossing it, which is why it's also known as a butterfly glioma, because the morphology has a butterfly look. And to remember that, we have a picture of the butterfly right up over here. Now we note this foam hand over here, with, and the grave. So this is the number one grave. This reminds us that glioblastoma multiforme is the number one malignant brain tumor in adults, which reminds us that it's the most common malignant primary brain tumor which shows up in adults. Finally, we note in the histologic picture over here, the pseudopalisading pleomorphic tumor cells. Pseudopalisading means that the cells are not actually palisading. Palisading means to line up. They're not actually lining up. There's actually just an area of central necrosis where the cells die off. So the surrounding tumor cells, which remain alive, give the appearance as if they're lining up. It's as if they're palisading. So this is known as pseudopalisading. And we have the astrocyte over here holding this picture just to remind us that the glioblastoma multiforme is associated with this histologic picture. Okay, that was a lot. Let's move on now to the next adult primary brain tumor. Here we see another character on the dance floor representing a brain tumor. Actually, this character over here is kind of off the dance floor. He didn't make it onto the dance floor because he's very slow. This guy over here, who is an olive, he is an olive with dendrites. He has these dendritic projections. So he is the olive with dendrites. Olive with dendrites for oligodendro, oligodendroglioma, which is another adult primary brain tumor. And as we mentioned, he's very slow, since oligodendroglioma is a slow growing tumor. And it is most often found in the frontal lobes. And that's why this olive guy over here is standing on a picture of a classic picture of an oligodendroglioma, where we see the tumor in the frontal lobes. If we take a look at what he himself is eating, he is eating this histologic picture of the fried egg cells. These are the fried egg cells with the round nuclei, which are seen on an histology of a section taken from an oligodendroglioma. This tumor is often calcified, and that makes sense. It's a tumor of the white matter in the frontal lobes. And this old man over here having these seizures reminds us of the seizures which happen when the tumor presses on the white matter. And the final point is the most obvious one, is that an oligodendroglioma is of oligodendrocyte origin. And this makes sense from its name. Okay, now that we've spoken about oligodendroglioma, let's move on now to meningioma. Here we have this lady over here with her meninges showing. So her meninges are showing, which reminds us of meningioma. The reason why we have a woman specifically is because meningioma classically presents in adult females. In fact, the tumor itself presents estrogen receptors. Anyway, she seems pretty nice, as this tumor is typically benign. And being a meningioma, it most often occurs near the surfaces of the brain and in the parasagittal region. And being benign, it is often asymptomatic. 
but it may present with seizures or focal neurologic signs. The spider over here reminds us that it is of arachnoid cell origin. The spider is looking at this piece of art over here, which reminds us of the world pattern seen on histology. When these cells calcify, it, it can lead to the development of somoma bodies. In the image over here, we see a classic picture of the meningioma, where there's a round mass which presses on the cortex. And again, this may cause seizures in the patient. Okay, now we've spoken about meningioma, let's move on to hemangioblastoma. And that's represented by this adult over here, as again, hemangioblastoma is a primary brain tumor of adults. So this one is associated with von Hippel-Lindau syndrome, represented by this hippo that he likes to have next to him sometimes. It can produce erythropoietin, leading to secondary polysthenia, represented by these red blood cells over here. And what's interesting to note is that this tumor is actually most often cerebellar. And as we'll see soon, most adult primary brain tumors are not cerebellar, which is an interesting fact. We'll come back to this. Let's move on now to pituitary adenoma. So here we have the pit bull representing pituitary adenoma. It's in this scene just to remind us that pituitary adenoma most commonly presents in adults. As for the details of pituitary adenoma, we're not going to discuss it so much in this video as we have another video on it, but just to mention a few brief points about pituitary adenoma, a pituitary adenoma may be non-functioning or silent or hyperfunctioning, in which case it is hormone producing. Non-functional tumors present with mass effect, in which there's bitemporal hemianopsia due to pressure on the optic chiasm, as well as pituitary apoplexy. Prolactinoma classically presents as galactorrhea, amenorrhea, and decreased bone density due to suppression of estrogen in women and as decreased libido and infertility in men. Okay, now let's move on to schwannoma. If you recall, we had this swan dancing at the beginning of the scene. This swan is an adult as the schwannoma classically presents in adults. It's a benign tumor of Schwann cells. And we can remember because this swan over here is quite nice and benevolent. If we note, he's standing on this $100 bill, which reminds us of the S100 marker, as schwannomas are S100 positive. The eight ball that he is sitting on reminds us of cranial nerve eight. That a schwannoma is especially common to be found localized to cranial nerve eight in the internal acoustic meatus. And that's why patients may present with loss of hearing and tinnitus. You might have noticed that he has this nifty shoe over here. The nifty shoe reminds us of NF2. That bilateral vestibular schwannomas are found in NF2. Neurofibromatosis type 2. In terms of histology, a schwannoma is characterized by dense hypercellular areas containing spindle cells alternating with hypocellular myxoid areas. Okay, now that we've spoken about all the adult primary brain tumors, let's talk about the primary brain tumors which present in children. So here we have this astronaut over here, who's holding a pile of cinder blocks. Pile of cinder blocks astronaut, or pile of cinder astronauts, for pilocytic astrocytoma. Pilocytic astrocytoma is a primary brain tumor of children. And if we note, we recognize this astrocyte again over here, as this tumor is also of astrocyte origin. So again, glioblastoma multiforme is the form of an astrocyte brain tumor in adults, whereas pilocytic astrocytoma is that is the form found in children. And again, we note the GFAP positive above the cinder blocks over here. Again, this is a marker of glial cells, as this is a component of the intermediate filaments. We note over here the histologic picture of the Rosenthal fibers. The rose over here reminds us of Rosenthal. And over here, we see the very eosinophilic processes of the glial cells, which is associated with, with the pilocytic astrocytoma. Now what's interesting is that where a glioblastoma multiforme is a malignant tumor, highly malignant, pilocytic astrocytoma is actually benign. And it makes sense that this tumor is often found in the cerebellum, since as we mentioned, child tumors are found below the tentorium. As a final point, in this tumor, there will be often a cystic lesion with a nodule on its wall. And that makes sense, pilocytic, cytic for cyst. Okay, now let's move on to medulloblastoma. And that's represented by this guy over here on the dance floor blasting away. And his rocket is metal. We'll call this the metal blasting away. Metal blasting for medulloblastoma. Medulloblastoma is the most common malignant brain tumor in children. So this explosion over here, kind of scary, reminds that medulloblastoma is malignant. And it commonly involves the cerebellum, just like pilocytic astrocytoma. In its position, it can actually compress the fourth ventricle, causing uncommunicating hydrocephalus, represented by the water shooting out of his head, leading to headaches and papilledema. 
And if we note, he's actually looking down because he's dropping something. I'm not really sure what he's dropping, but the dropping reminds us of the drop metastases, that medulloblastoma can send metastases to the spinal cord, and it can actually spread rapidly there, which is why medulloblastoma has a poor prognosis. If we take a look at this histologic picture over here, we note Homer over here. Homer reminds us of the Homer right rosettes, which happens when the small blue cells wrap around the pink areas of neuritic processes, and this is associated with the medulloblastoma. Okay, let's move on now to ependymoma. And that's represented by this dancer over here who has a pen of his mom. He has a pen over here that has a face of his mom on it. So this is the pen mom. A pen of mom for a pendymoma. This again is most commonly found in the fourth ventricle. And the water shooting out of his head again reminds us of the hydrocephalus. And it's shooting onto this histologic picture, which we should associate with a pendymoma, in which we see the perivascular pseudorosettes, which is when the tumor cells surround blood vessels. Okay, now let's move on to craniopharyngioma. Represented by this kid over here who likes to dress up as Pharaoh and put a crane on his head. Crane Pharaoh for craniopharyngioma. Craniopharyngioma is actually the most common childhood supratentorial tumor. So this is a little bit different than the other childhood tumors which we've mentioned, which were below the tentorium. And we can remember that it's supratentorium because he likes to put things on top of his head, high above his head, on top of the tentorium. So a craniopharyngioma is actually derived from remnants of Rathke's pouch. And we can remember that because he likes to have this red pouch. Red pouch for Rathke's pouch. We note that there is this bicycle over here that's blocking his vision. Bicycle for bitemporal. Bitemporal hemianopsia. That a craniopharyngioma can compress the optic chiasm causing a bitemporal hemianopsia. With this tumor, calcification is common, and these crystals over here should remind us of the cholesterol crystals, which are found in the motor oil-like fluid within this tumor. We didn't put this in the scene, but if you want, you can imagine the pineapple over here leaning over for pineoloma, which is a tumor of the pineal gland, which can cause paranoid syndrome, which is a compression of the tectum leading to vertical gaze palsy. Pineoloma is associated with a, an obstructive hydrocephalus in which there's compression of the cerebral aqueduct, as well as precocious puberty in males. Okay, I know we discussed a lot in this scene. I hope you enjoyed. Take care.